Welcome to episode 22 of Lionesses Daily and we have two very special guests. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. You are terrible people. I enjoyed that. Actually. Yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you two. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Mary, I'm guessing that Fran came on the show last time, told you how much fun she had, and you couldn't wait to get on with her. Am I right? She was jumping out of the hotel earlier, honestly. It? Yeah, absolutely jumping. Oh, that's downstairs. not how I recall it. It was more like, <laughs> I think you wanted someone else, and then they dropped out, so you just wrote me in as a, <laughs> as a bit of a pity invite. That's, what, that's, what I, that's how I heard it. Well, Never, I mean. Mary. We've been waiting for you to get here. Now, we had Alex Greenwood on the show a few days ago. She was very kind about you, Fran. Yeah, when I spoke to yeah. her, we were good, good friends. Yeah. We throw each other under the bus. I know, right? I, I wanted a bit nice of to a... have a roommate like that. <laughs> yeah, so on the other hand, Merps, can we call you Merps? By you, the way? Of course, of course. Thank but thanks you. for asking. <laughs> thanks. So, uh, Merps, Tony Duggan, uh, yeah, she kind of threw you under the bus. She said, you were very, very messy. Is this true? No, it's not true. And she knows no. exactly how to wind me up. <laughs> I could be very, very mean and give her some home truths, but I will rise above and stay classy. What, Tony. What is she like as a roommate then? Come on, you, you can tell us something. Yeah, she, she, I mean, me and, her, me and her get on well, but yeah. she knows exactly what buttons to press to wind me up mm. and she thoroughly enjoys it. Um, no, she's, she's good fun, we, we have a laugh. We're always, yeah, winding each other up or trying to get a reaction out of one another in one way. But she has a, she has a few, um, few habits that drive me a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fine, we have a great... We're, bit, we're, we're four years strong now, so. Four years? Four years, yes, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you know each other extremely well. Yeah, I'd say so. Pretty good. Now, <laughs> did you guys watch the Netherlands game last night? The tournament is turning a very European, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I mean, I think I read something the other day where it's like, you might as well call it the Euros, but yeah. obviously USA. Um, but no, it's exciting and it just shows, you know, how far women's football has come in Europe. Um, and how much more the teams are taking it seriously and how strong we are as you know Europeans going into a tournament like this. Absolutely and Mary you spent the past season playing abroad in Germany. Right. What has that experience been like? Oh yeah it was brilliant like it, I think it and not even I think it was the best year of my life and career to date. Um, it taught me so much about me as a person in terms of growing up in a different country and mm -hmm. experiencing a new culture and a new language. I think you, you have to mature a lot um, I thought I was mature before, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, and, you know, as a player as well, just a different style of training, playing against the calibre of players at, at Wolfsburg. It's just every single day you have to raise your game. There's, you have no option. So, yeah, it was a, a great year. And, and just to echo what Fran said, I think there's so many strong European teams not here as well, which yeah. is insane. So, um, yeah, the, f the football in Europe at the moment is, is amazing. Yeah, and you played with the likes of Pernell Harder. Mm -hmm. Is there a genuine belief that England are a serious threat at this World Cup? Yeah, for sure. I feel like that, I think a lot of people are expecting us to win it, um, which is great because that, I think that shows how far we've come and developed over the last mm -hmm. few years. And, and I think it's also nice coming back to England because they don't necessarily hear all of that. But um, yeah, I, I think a lot of the talk over the last few months has been, you know, a lot of countries are watching what England's do at all age groups, men and women's, all age groups, they're thinking, what are they doing? What are they doing different? Because on the men's side, the youth players coming out of that setup is, is unbelievable and, and same for us as well. So, And Fran, Norway, two players you know very well from Chelsea, Marin Mielder and Maria Thorstotia. Did I pr pronounce them okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, there's still a bit that I'm trying to learn with the accents and yeah, everything, yeah. but yeah, we, we just go with that and just hope that it's right. <laughs> yeah, we pray. Have you spoken to them? Yeah, so we had a little catch up yesterday, which was nice just to kind of uh, see how each other are feeling and stuff like that. But it's exciting, you know, and it's something that we all want to be a part of a quarterfinal. And obviously, unfortunately, one of us has to lose. Um, but, you know, it's an exciting time for both teams and it just shows how far we've both come in such a, you know, obviously playing them four years ago in the World Cup. Um, so that was exciting. And now, obviously, we've got a new sign in at Chelsea also, Guru, and we're really excited to see her play and see what she brings to the game. Yep. And they qualified ahead of the Netherlands. It's going to be a tough game, but with our talent and our belief, we can win like in 2015, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we've got 
such a strong squad um, and the belief, like Mary said, you know, to say that all along we're coming here to win. So, you know, it's exciting to be a part of it. And I think Norway are going to be really, really strong. Um, as they always have been, you know, they're very solid, they're structured, they know what they're doing. Um, so we have to go in there 110% and make sure that, first of all, we work hard off the ball and, you know, the rest will come. Absolutely. Right, next up is Maz Pacheco from our under-23s, teaching you how to. Hi, I'm Maz Pacheco and this is How To. Shooting with the instep of your foot. Step one, place the ball on the floor and make an arch run up. Step two, place your weaker foot just before the ball and make sure your head is over it. Step three, bring in your kicking foot through, use the inside of your boot, making sure you kick right through the ball. Striking the ball with the instep of your foot. Completed it. <laughs> Nice one, Maz. Now, yesterday we saw you guys back at the beach with those Nerf guns. What, I mean, what is the point in that? Is it to kind of uh, get you all together, get you moving? I think it's just an excuse for us to shoot each other, to be honest, <laughs> um, and get some aggression out. No, I think it, the idea is obviously like on a recovery day that we're moving and a sort of an active recovery thing and have, have a bit of fun while, you, while you're doing it. So. We did add a little bit of stretching in there as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did yeah. add like a five minute stretching Tiny period. So. Tiny bit of yoga. Yeah, so sort of. you can class it as recovery. Do the Nerf guns get quite competitive though? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, towards the end it sort of just becomes whoever's got the guns is shooting whoever from two I yards. I definitely got shot in the face yesterday. Did you? It was you! <laughs> it was actually you! <laughs> Mary's like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Fran, but I was fully in control of my <laughs> weapon. Uh, Mary, I'm addicted to the Lioness's Instagram story uh, and I was quite impressed by this. Tell us what is happening there. So you're doing keepy ups. Did you count how many you did? Was it all in one take? Of course, it's always all in one take. Mm. I crossed the road. So Leah had a volleyball. Yeah. And then she was just holding it. So then I was like, I want to kick it. And then, so I just started kicking it. And then Sue, our security was very, and Steve were very conscious that I wasn't looking when I was crossing the road. So we kind of stopped a little bit. Okay. And then there was a lamppost close incident. But apart from that, it was pretty, it was pretty yeah. continuous. I think Lou will tell you, it was pretty continuous. And then, until we got to the steps, that was, that was more the tricky part. But then when I got the technique right, I think Fran would have been. Crushed it. Fran the freestyler yeah. would have been impressed. Yeah, Fran, you got some competition here. Yeah, I know, yeah. Welcome, welcome to the club, <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah. Now, uh, we've been watching our five things you didn't know VTs here on the show. And we found out about you, black belt in judo. What? Yeah, I, yeah, when I was, yeah, when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me. Um, yeah, no, when, when I was younger, I, I got involved in every sport going and um, yeah, one of my friends was involved in, no, my brother got involved with judo and I was like, yeah, throw, throw someone around a bit and then I got involved with it and then I became a junior black belt, but then it kind of got to the stage where I had to, only did it for a few years and I had to choose between football and uh, judo, so I was like on a judo summer camp and in between I was going off doing my fitness football program for England under 15, oh, wow. so it was, yeah. So then I kind of had to choose, but yeah, loved it. Do you still do it now at all? No, I don't do it oh. now. I mean, I think it would be too much of a risk with injury, but yeah, I, think, I think it was really good because it kind of taught me how to fall. And um, yeah, like if you threw me over now, I'd probably do something weird and hit the ground <laughs> to try and break my fall. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's don't not worry. do that. <laughs> we will not be doing that on today's show. <laughs> right, we have some questions from Twitter. So a Coventry lady says, how did you feel when you were called up for the World Cup? Um, I was actually really nervous, especially the night before. We got the email quite early and I, I like to sleep quite a lot. So like I didn't like, you know, set the alarm or anything. What? Like I was just more like whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm quite chill, quite laid back. But obviously the night before I was quite nervous um, to, you know, wake up and get the email. But I think when you first see the first line, it's like that real sense of pride. And I, I think, you know, I probably was smiling for the rest of the day. Um, and it's just such a special moment and you want to share it with with special people so obviously you know I was 
able to like tell my family and stuff like that and they were so proud of me and happy for me so yeah it was it was good special Mary yeah I think just excitement really you've I, I thought of sort of like you, you're waiting for the email or the confirmation for for a long time and you just get to the point where you sort of like okay am I in or am I out yeah. because you want to really get start to get excited about it but then you're managing your own expectations that you know it may not happen so you're like just kind of waiting around for that and obviously it had been a long season kind of already and you're like just really ready to go so yeah just excitement and then yes talking to my family just thinking about reminiscing about all the things you've kind of done over the years to try and get to this point it was really special I feel like you count down the days, don't you? Yeah. Like we all knew what day it was coming out, so everyone a week before was like, oh, it's a week, it's a week. You know? <laughs> Little calendar. <Yeah. laughs> all right, Rachel King says, what's it like being in the tunnel before a big game? Also, well done for getting to the final eight. Bring it it's, home. It's quite weird, because I think everyone expects you to be really serious and really focused and really, you know, and you have that, but it's more excitement. Like, I'm really excited to walk out and, like, see the crowd and just get on the pitch. And if anything, it's more like you're becoming unpatient you know you're becoming like I just want to get out there and play football and you're waiting there you're waiting there and then you have to do everything alongside but you know I think it's you probably go through a whole mixture you, know, you go in there you're like really focused really ready to go and then you're starting to become okay I just want to get out there now I'm just excited like it's probably a bit of a mixture really do you feel do you get quite nervous before um, sometimes I think it's I try and keep a bit of a level like I always like to be a little bit nervous because I think that shows that you care and that you're really feeling it like if I don't feel nervous it, it would it would feel odd like yeah. um, so I think like a little bit of nerves focus as Fran said but yeah just kind of like you, I, the thing that I always think about is like you know you get your strength from your training so all the hard work that you're putting in training has come down to this moment like you work hard so that the game's easy and those are just the cliches that kind of like go over in my head and yeah I, I like if my family are there I'm just thinking yeah like I just want to play and play for them and and, and make them proud of me so oh, keep those tweets coming in using the hashtag lionesses daily because we love to hear from you guys now throughout the tournament here on the show we're giving you the chance to win amazing prizes thanks to the lionesses supporters club now fran a chelsea fan won your signed boots ah yeah that's cool. how cool is that ah. amazing now uh, beth mead has stepped up a bit fran she's given us signed shirt and signed boots yeah, you probably got the best person for that. <laughs> you know, you got my boots, so that's fine. And there you, you have go. to get Mido's, you know, shirt and boots. That's, that's the only way it goes. And where so do we go from here, right? <laughs> now to enter, all you've got to do You're is not go getting to my the link. <laughs> <laughs> go Thank to God. the link on the screen and answer a very simple question. And we will announce the winner ahead of tomorrow's game. Good luck. Now we have our FIFA Women's World Cup France 2019 official sticker collection by Panini. Merps, would you sign your sticker, please? I would if I had one. You, you've got one. I Come on, Mary. Okay, yes. Watch I've this show. <laughs> we have what? all of our. <laughs> oh, there's an extra page here. Ooh, Twenty-three oh my of our goodness. players. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So your sticker, your Frank. Sticker? Could you grab the uh, sticker and pen over there? You've already done yours. I have. So whilst Mary does that, make Fran, sure that you stick it in because I got moaned at last time for not sticking my uh, <laughs> not by me. In. No. Not by <laughs> me. Fran, what do you remember <laughs> from Norway in 2015? I remember it was the hottest game I think I've ever played in in my life. Um, it was in Ottawa and it was absolutely boiling um, the first half. We probably should have been a few goals down in the first half um, but we showed great kind of you know character to come back in the second half and play well and to hold off you know the the attack from threat from Norway in that first half I think was really good from us and it just showed kind of the resilience we have and then to go on and win the game after going a goal down you know was really special and it's probably one of the standout games, I think, if you ask the girls to just show, you know, the belief that we had in that team to, you know, be under the cosh a lot of the first half to then go in the second half and win the game. Um, I think it really built the momentum from there. And I think that was probably the game that kind of switched our heads to, do you know what, we can actually go on and do well in this tournament. And I think that was the standout moment. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Now, we love our Lionesses, but what does it mean to them to be a Lioness? Here's Demi Stokes. I'm Demi Stokes and I'm an Lioness. I think it's an honour, I think, obviously, to get this point in your career. Um, it's always something, you know, I, I wanted in life. Um, so to obviously say it and do it and, and be here and actually be living it is um, an honour and a, a dream come true. Um, on the pitch, I think everyone's really supportive. Um, I don't doubt whatever 11, you know, starting 11 go out there, they'll, 
they'll give their all, um, you know, for the person to your right and left of you. Um, off the pitch again, it's, it's the same. Um, I think we're a close group, everyone gets on and, um, you know, really supportive. So I, I think no matter what you, whether you're on the field, whether you're off it, whether you're starting, whether you're a non-starter, um, you know, you, you're always going to get that same respect and uh, looked after by everyone. Now, guys, how amazing has the support been? Can you believe 6.9 million people watched the game against Cameroon? I can, yeah, because I think the, I think the England are doing pretty well yeah, at the minute, yeah. so I think they should watch. But yeah, the support's been incredible. I mean, I know so many people who've come out and I'm just yeah. like, wow, you guys have work and stuff and you're actually, comp yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just nice. So yeah, it's, the support's been amazing. And can we smash that? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the further we go in the tournament, the better, you know, the more people will watch. And I heard that obviously Glastonbury are showing yeah. it on the big screen, which is pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's great to see all the people supporting us back home. And, you know, we want to continue to do well and hopefully, you know, make them people proud and get people watching us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Good luck for tomorrow. Now, we will be live tomorrow at the Trappist Bar in La Havre. Come and say hello. We'll see you there.